Hey guys, Alex from European Coffee Trip and in this video I would like to talk about what's happening in the world right now. From coronavirus, COVID-19, coronavirus in Italy, the coronavirus crisis is changing life as we know it dramatically. Most of us stopped going to the coffee shops. Actually, most of them are closed or running in the restricted mode. And the streets of big cities are empty. There are no people. It's a very tough moment for any hospitality business and even more if they depend on the tourism. To better understand the situation, we asked 13 coffee shops owners from all across Europe to share their view. And these coffee shops are of different categories. Some roast coffee, some serve food, some just open and some others are here for many years. And the situation is very different for each of them, but we hope that with support of the government and local communities, they will be able to overcome the challenge and the crisis. And we are looking forward to have a cup of coffee when they open and when they are back again. Hello everyone, Marian here from uh, Happy Baristas in Berlin. Um, our situation is that we are closed um, fully uh, for two weeks now. We actually decided to close the shop, I think a day before the actual government order came in. Um, basically we made that decision based on our sales, the last four or five um, trading days for us were always a big drop about 30 to 40 percent every single day from the turnover from the previous day and it just didn't really make sense to stay open. We are hoping to be able to open again after Easter or let's say end of April. Uh, hopefully the, stric the restriction will uh, no longer be in place um, uh, but obviously the business will be different. Um, and so we're using this time to to rethink our strategies, to rethink our services and how to come back maybe in a slightly different way and how to adapt to all the new situations. Um, and we're actually trying to use the time at home to do some online training, um, to think about new food and drink menus for the summer. Um, trying to educate ourselves um, and actually just really relax and do do stuff that we didn't really have time to do before. Um, trying to stay positive um, and hopefully when this is all over, we are going to be able to come back uh, stronger and better than, than ever. The financial impact is insane. As I said, we're fully closed. There is no money coming in um, and so the whole we basically kept the whole team we didn't fire anyone um except the two mini jobbers which are basically even less than a part-time um everyone else applies to get um basically help financial help from the government which is 60 percent of their full-time um wage um but we are still waiting to 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 hear from the government when is this going to happen and how is this going to happen which is the biggest um, unknown uh, for us at the moment we're trying to keep everyone we think that investing in people and keeping the team together is very very important we don't want to let everyone go um, and hopefully that won't be really necessary but survival of the business obviously is is um, a very very important and difficult question so we're trying not to think about that that much as long as we can go we go on um, and yeah we're trying to stay positive so stay safe stay positive we'll make it through hi guys it's uh, Mathieu this is Emmy we are uh, baristas and uh, co-owners at uh, Mame in uh, Zurich, Switzerland. And we are closed uh, as a shop, as a non-essential, uh, so to say, activity. And also because we gather a lot of customers and so this could spread the virus. Uh, so we've been asked to close the shop. It's been two weeks and uh, we wouldn't have the possibility of doing takeaway only, but then we decided to close it 
entirely because like Metro was saying, yes, we have a lot of um, uh, people contacts and that's what we normally enjoy, but unfortunately this time it doesn't really help the situation. So since two weeks our shops are closed. At the beginning we actually didn't know really what to do, uh, especially because no shops means um, no jobs for our barista. So we have eight baristas. And so the first thing we thought is how are we going to survive? So we looked the first thing at our financial, um, but we knew that if we would have to pay the salary uh, without any revenue from the shop, this wouldn't last very long, unfortunately. So a couple days after, um, actually the government of Switzerland uh, really was very helpful, saying that for exactly this type of job, uh, they will take care of 80% of their salary. So in German, uh, in Switzerland, it's called the Kurzarbeit, um, which you can translate by partial unemployment. Um, this now we know has been spread a lot in, um, in Europe and I think it's fantastic news because the first reaction from all the baristas is okay, we'll get some money, maybe not as much as we wished, but at least we can eat and pay the rent, which I think was the most important. Not gonna lie, it's a critical situation. I guess it's the same for everybody in, in, um, in Europe. Despite of those difficulties, uh, we are very thankful that our roastery is still up and running. Uh, we just released our website uh, a few days prior to this uh, crisis. Um, yes, uh, thankfully we have a lot of uh, customers who are continuously uh, supporting us, ordering there. So we roast twice a week, uh, we ship twice a week. And we're very thankful about it and grateful that they lights our life quite much because at the roastery we drink a lot of coffees, we do much more QCs than before, we have better structures because we have more time and hopefully after this crisis we can come back strong. The biggest uh, takeaway that I have from this is uh, if, you got, if you guys out there uh, can support your local rosters, please do because we see for us it makes such a difference yeah. Uh, it really helps us to pay the bills and to survive. Uh, so for all the rosters out there that uh, have a website or even if they, they don't have, to call them I think it's so important. Hi, Hi guys, Hi. it's Tom and Kat from Buchtabi. At the moment we are shut because of the government restriction. So we basically do just the maintenance and some planning for the coffee shop coffee shop is shut as you can see so the government shut us basically on 14th of march yes many shops uh, uh, like run. most of the shops in the Brno or uh, in czech republic where we are from and uh, after that most of the shops are completely uh, closed now they appear again just for the takeaways from the window, but we don't have any window, so we, we can't do that. don't have nice <laughs> window. And as I can show you, our street is really empty. <clears throat> so it doesn't make sense for us to do so. It's nobody here. Our baristas at the moment, because they are part timers only. They are at home, so it will be just me and Kat who will be doing all the work during this quarantine period. Yeah. We don't have any coffee left at the moment because our amazing customers so, uh, bought everything when we needed to sell it. So we don't have any problems with the goods, but yeah, we are closed. The rent is going on the bills and everything so hope hopefully at least delivery will cover some costs so that's that's it guys okay. how, uh, how are you hopefully you are doing fine around the world fingers crossed for, fingers everyone. Crossed for everyone bye, bye, -bye. Hi, my name is Markus and I run Sweet Spot Cafe in Munich, Germany. We had to close last Wednesday I'm not sure we actually had to close because the rules were quite intransparent and there were all kinds of exceptions and we didn't know 
whether we fit any of those exceptions. If you do stuff to go, you could stay open. If you sold food, you could stay open. In the end, it didn't feel right to us, so we decided to close. We've been closed for one week now. In the three weeks before we closed, we could already uh, notice a large hit in uh, sales. We sold 20% less in the first week of March and then probably half or a third of what we usually do in the last few days. Equipment sales went up actually, bean sales as well, but uh, cup sales went way down and as everybody who runs a coffee shop knows that revenue uh, isn't king because you make a lot less money on Akayas and Commandantes than you do on Espressos and Batch Brews. Uh, our outlook for the future is quite uncertain right now. Officially we're going to be closed till the beginning of April, but no one really believes that we'll be open uh, in a week or two again. Uh, this will most likely be four, six, eight weeks. We don't really know at this point. So uh, we're looking for other ways to keep busy. And so we spend the last three, four days on our bikes, just biking out coffee uh, to our regular customers and people who are interested. Um, and yeah, we were able to sell almost all of the coffee. So we're pretty, the shelves are empty now, which is a good feeling. I'm not planning on letting anybody go because I'm very happy with the people I have and I'm do, going to do everything to keep them. But um, we're not sure how much of the pay we can get refunded um, because there's different kind of types of employment here in Germany and only the full-time employees will get um, compensated. So right now I don't really know where it will go, but um, yeah, if it's only for a few weeks, then I will keep paying baristas and hope that they can work those hours in the summer maybe and catch up. Um, if we're going to be close for eight, 10 weeks, then yeah, I can't afford to pay everybody. I'm spending my day setting up an online shop, working on the website, um, drinking great coffee at home um, and just figuring all the bureaucracy around this weird situation out. Hey, I'm Philip from Jonas Reindl Coffee Roasters in Vienna, Austria. We have two coffee shops here in beautiful Vienna, which unfortunately have been closed for quite some time now. Um, the government has shut down all shops, restaurants, cafes, bars uh, since March 17th. We actually closed both our shops on March 13th already because we didn't want to take any risks uh, for our guests or our staff. Um, this obviously puts us and all small businesses into a pretty difficult position uh, with fixed costs running um, and no money coming in whatsoever. It's not fun to uh, not know what the future will bring, but I remain optimistic that uh, we will recover from this and we will get through this crisis and Jonas Handel will be, you know, uh, successful again. Um, but of course, I've spoken to many colleagues and small business owners uh, in the hospitality industry, especially coffee shop owners, but also other kinds of hospitality. And unfortunately, the majority of them will not be able to keep their staff. It's just always the same story that in hospitality, in Austria at least, uh, small businesses just don't have the cash reserves to um, keep paying fixed costs whilst not making any money. No one can get through that for very long. I'm still roasting and also doing all the packaging and all that myself as of now. Uh, that's keeping me pretty busy every day. Uh, and other than that, I just uh, try to stick to a routine. I've read a lot about how uh, in situations like this routine is really the way to go. So I'm just, you know, exercising every day, uh, cooking all my meals, which I love. Actually, I do that a lot before, but now I have the time to really um, experiment a lot, actually. So that's a lot of fun.
I take my dog for a long walk every day and you know just have that same routine pretty much every day and that helps me to keep my morale high and I would give uh, anyone else that advice uh, but the most important thing is that you make the right decisions that put your business onto a path that it can recover from this crisis that it can get through this crisis um, even if it might not return to where it once was immediately it needs to be you know on a pathway that will allow it to get through this crisis hey guys this is alex from black slovakia our coffee shop in Bratislava closed its doors on March 13, which was Friday. Government had restricted uh, all the coffee shops and other shops uh, that are not able to operate right now. Uh, and we are all waiting what the situation will bring. Some, uh, some of the shops here trying to produce at least some uh, income by opening a, let's call it a window to sell coffee and beans and some food. Our one shop uh, is closed, our wholesale uh, is almost none because every other coffee shop around here in Slovakia and other countries around us and our customers are closed too. Our income uh, dropped by at least 80 to 90 percent since our coffee shop was the main source uh, of funds. So now we're waiting for government to take actions uh, and to, to bring some funds in the game, not just for the coffee shops, but, but for everyone who was injured by, by this cause but at least they will probably help us to pay our employees so so they they will stay with us and they will have a place to come back when this is all over i'd like to think that we will survive this all of us shop owners across the europe um because there are positives to it too um, it's it's a learning experience for me um, being so much out of the comfort zone uh, brings you new ideas and new perspectives all the time so I wish you all to stay positive to to do as much as we can but not to to try to cooperate with it and not to fight it This is Carlos from Cafezal here in Milan. It has been a very difficult moment for, for all of us, I think all over the world. Uh, in Milan uh, is, has not been different. It's, uh, it was one of the, the first affected cities by, by the virus and, and is growing and growing uh, in a very strong way still and hopefully things will pass as soon as possible. Uh, our baristas are absolutely sure, so the government in Italy, they launch uh, a package called uh, Decreto Cura uh, Italia. So it's a package that uh, supports the business and essentially the, the, the employees for business like ours. Uh, so they, they are insured, that's very important for us because as you know it's very uh, important to have very qualified baristas working in, uh, in uh, specialty. Uh, today is the, is the 30th of March. So uh, I think uh, things will might start getting back to normality in, uh, in uh, roughly one month time. But I think our shop will open probably in two months time. So I don't see much uh, things much different than that. What I can say about, uh, about new things to do. So we are essentially working on, on the e-commerce. And I definitely suggest not only the roasters that absolutely are doing this, but also the coffee shops that may have some uh, internet um, or uh, e-commerce or homepage, try to sell as much as possible online. So to connect people that influence in the sector, people that has content to tell our customers, so I definitely suggest that and try to, 
to arrange with uh, your uh, local customers either to destock so uh, your your stocks of coffee and also to uh, to to try to to sell it or your coffees uh, around your country okay and i i hope you guys from coffee shops coffee roasts all over the world also will be back in uh, great great shape okay Hey guys, this is Tibor from Espresso Embassy in Budapest. Um, we actually closed our cafe today. A uh, limited curfew has been set in place. So uh, this is where we decided to pull the plug uh, or at least suspend uh, Espresso Embassy. In the last two weeks or a little bit more, we have been cutting down. Uh, first, we reduced the numbers of tables in the cafe and turned off Wi-Fi. Then we started reducing the terrace. Then we switched to only takeout, put a plexiglass on the window. Um, just kept limiting contact as, as much as we could. Um, but with today's uh, limited curfew that was enacted by the government here in Hungary, uh, we decided that, um, that um, somehow we should we should we should take part in this and uh, try to limit the movement of people now this may be not the end of it uh, I'm looking at and we're looking as a team uh, to find a way to continue uh, either if uh, the curfew gets further limitations or we'll find some other format to uh, to function um, our sales have uh, fallen uh, very gradually as uh, as the people in Hungary uh, started moving less and less which is of course very good um, so far I have I've been keeping my staff but uh, it is more and more necessary to hear from the Hungarian government if they will support workers uh, either through uh, through paying part of their salaries in these uh, most struck um, sectors or paying everybody a, uh, a, a living wage or uh, having some sort of a support for the unemployed. But so far, uh, none of these measures have been enacted. So this is where we're now. So hello everyone on your European coffee trip. Uh, my name is Frankishek and uh, since we were freshly open coffee shop in Prague, uh, we didn't get the chance to, to have that many regulars and that many people know about us. So it has affected us quite a bit. The overall government restrictions in Czech Republic are quite strict, I guess, but it's for the good thing, I hope. So. We're basically limited to the takeaway coffee right now and it's the only thing we do because we don't do any pastry, we don't do food, we just want to focus on the, on the uh, protection of our guests and ourselves. So the drop rate of the sales is around 50% right now, but we're trying, we're trying to sell coffee beans by 50 beans, we're trying, as I said, to sell the takeaway coffee. We're mainly focusing on the sunny days. We're open from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. And that's the window we're trying to use to get some sales. We're trying to improve all of our products, whatever it's filter coffee, espresso coffee. We're just trying to try new things, uh, try new cocktails. We're just trying to be, trying to stay active and do some good coffee for the people that likes us. Stay strong and uh, let's survive this. Hi guys, hi, I'm Evelyn. I'm the owner and founder of Nomads Coffee in Antibes uh, on the Côte d'Azur in south of France. I opened uh, the shop only a couple of months ago, end of November, and as so many others, I had to closed down two weeks ago for another, I don't know, 
four weeks maybe, six weeks, I have no idea, so no one knows. But it's the same for all of us. Um, it's pretty hard, it's very strict here in France. All the shops, restaurants are closed. There is a confinement phase, all, everyone has to stay at home. Um, the streets are empty, so it's quite frightening a little bit uh, when you go out. First, uh, I would say stay connected with your coffee community. I mean, that's what, of course, what I miss most. I mean, that's, of course, you, you have a lot of turnover of four to six weeks, that hurts. But for me, even more, it hurts not to see my daily guests and my, <laughs> my regulars. <laughs> I was very new when I, uh, in town when I came here and opened the shop. So I didn't know anyone here. So yeah, it's a little bit, it feels like a new second family here for me. A lot of daily customers, uh, friends now. So, so yeah, stay connected with them over different channels. I mean, technology is great just right now. It's phenomenal what's possible. <laughs> I need to admit myself, I was never very much a, a social media person, <laughs> but in the last two, two weeks I was in social media a lot more than ever before and it's, it's really a lot of fun. I think most important for, for me as well and for, for everyone I guess is slow down. <laughs> when you work in a coffee bar or you own a coffee bar, you're always busy, you have always a lot of things to do, you're multitasking, you work a lot of working hours. But now there is time to just slow down a little bit, to sleep long, to cook, to eat healthy, do some sports, of course, at home, then call your friends um, and even sometimes just do nothing. <laughs> I never had time to do nothing and now it's perfect. You just get up in the morning, you have nothing on your to-do list and then you can just see what's going to happen. And then, of course, we need to be like curious what's going to happen afterwards. Uh, I think everyone will be more really happy and appreciate being able to go out to meet with friends. Uh, imagine guests coming for their first cup of coffee to your shop. I mean, it would be just great. And like, I think there will be a lot of like good vibes on the street. European Coffee Trip, this is Zishan Malik. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of Coffee in The Hague. Uh, so in Holland, the government restrictions are pretty straightforward. We went into a hospitality shutdown uh, on March 15th, essentially meaning that all restaurants and cafes like ours um, just closed their doors to the public uh, with only takeaway and deliveries still being allowed. So the shutdown originally started on March 15th and was planned to last till April 6th uh, for approximately three weeks. But as the situation developed, um, the government realized that social distancing had to be enforced a little better um, with some more stringent measures and as a result of that schools were shut down and meeting in public spaces was also banned until June 1st. Now whilst that is a separate measure from the one that was taken on hospitality it's safe to assume that as a result of these measures cafes aren't likely to open um, until June 1st either. So at the moment um, we're looking at two and a half to three months at least um, of not being able to open our doors to the general public. We have no active revenue streams at the moment. We aren't a roaster um, and we don't have any real retail activities outside of our shop, which means that um, for businesses like us, there really, really isn't much that can be done. We've seen this as an excuse to essentially do some work uh, in our space to renovate it and give it the care that we aren't able to give it uh, as a business that has to run seven days a week. Um, so there would be a lot of things that we'd sort of put a pin in with the hopes to be able to do when we would finally magically find some time and we now have found a lot of time. So we are keeping busy as a team on um, just maintaining the space and making some improvements and making some modifications and making some upgrades. Um, it's also been a time for me um, to sit and sort of reflect on what we've been able to accomplish in the last three years. What are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? And what we can do um, sort of for, for the future. Um, what we can do from here on out. Stay strong. This is a problem that we are all going through together. Um, and therefore, we are all going to collectively recover from it. Um, you as a coffee shop owner have seen your fair share of problems before. Um, this isn't anything you can't handle. Um, have faith in your governments, have faith in your communities, have faith in your team, 
um, be there for the people you can be there for. Um, and um, take it a day at a time. That is literally the only thing that um, I keep reminding the people around me. This isn't a problem for which there is a guidebook or rule book or instruction manual. It's something that you have to sort of um, ask yourself if you're doing the very best that you can and uh, take it a day at a time. We have a few locations and a few different things that we do, uh, like for example providing uh, coffee services and baristas for other locations. Um, in general, the drop I think has been 94, 95%. Well, I didn't adjust, I'm trying to adjust and I think it will take uh, a very long time because I'm uh, kind of trying to fight the system in a way uh, because my main uh, interest is to be able to continue providing as much work opportunities for our team so uh, we don't create more people without jobs and uh, the option of paying their bills so we came up with a few uh, interesting original ideas let's call it one was that for everyone ordering brewing equipment online there will be uh, kind of face uh, chat with, uh, with brewing, with uh, Ukash Gawenski, our head barista. The other thing that we did was, for example, install walkie-talkies that you can see if you see the door. So for people who want to avoid this close contract, contact, uh, there's a cleaning station to disinfect the walkie-talkie, then you can make the order uh, or just knock on the window which is also fine and uh, the biggest project we're taking part in uh, recently from the beginning of the week was uh, a hashtag brew at home um, which is uh, I mean it's it's global and it's fantastic so I'm very hopeful for that uh, a new thing we launched in the beginning of the week was what we called the coffee runner which is here for the neighborhood uh, around the cafe for anyone who wants a hot cup of coffee and doesn't feel like actually brewing at home then uh, we come the payment is done in advance and we just come put it uh, packed in a bag next to the door and kind of leave it there for them uh, and uh, in general I think we're trying to stay positive you've this time kind of as a downtime to take care of all the back office work and uh, things like this in order to make sure that when the situation does end we can kind of move forward fast rather than only pick up the pieces from there. I think the only advantage of what is happening right now is the fact that it's happening to all of us uh, together and that is I think something extremely valuable and amazing things can come out from this like collaborations and uh, that are not just uh, regional or national but actually global. Um, when you're suffering alone it's horrible you you don't want to talk about it you're ashamed you're afraid when it's happening to everyone everyone's going through the same stuff which gives a great opportunity to actually be creative and build something stronger uh, stronger community that all of us would be able to gain from and, and grow in the future and uh, let's be realistic the situation is shit, but as Wukash my head barista says when you've got shit, make it top shit. So that's what we're trying to do. Stay, uh, stay positive. Try to look at the small things, like uh, that uh, there's sun on my face right now, and that uh, uh, there's no crime yet, and uh, things like this. Just, I think that's that's the best, and we're in this together. We're based in Greece. Where government ordered a total shutdown of operations for all hospitality establishments more than two weeks ago, with an exception of those who would still stay open and serve on a takeaway or delivery service basis. That's what we did. Uh, we modified our space, we modified our menus, we modified our working hours and started operating in this new way for us. The first week was alright, I guess, but during the second week and the total ban of circulation, things would, went a lot worse. Right now we're down to 70 or 80% of our business, but we still want to stay open 
in order to be able to provide even one paycheck per day for uh, one of our baristas and cover some basic expenses for us. From a seven days a week cafe, we went to a five days a week cafe operating just with one shift per day. We're not supported by any government measures or whatsoever at this time and uh, predicting that this whole situation could last for at least one, one and a half month in the future, we right now try to focus into alternative ways to still re be able to stay open and serve our local community. This being e-commerce or delivery service, we're still trying to adapt to this new situation. Of course, we stay a lot at home during these days, baking a lot, making a lot of coffee, drinking a lot of cocktails and wine, connecting with friends and uh, trying to stay safe. One last thing that I'd like to share with my fellow colleagues all around the world is that we're not alone, guys. I've seen great acts of solidarity and support these days that I've never seen before. Until this all goes away and we can go back to normal things and less important things such as baking a cinnamon bun or dialing in a coffee, let's stay strong, let's stay positive, let's stay hopeful. That was all for me. That was all from Athens. Goodbye, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Stay strong, stay healthy and brew coffee at home. And please support your local cafes, roasteries and bakeries. They will really appreciate it. And not only financially, but also mentally because they will feel your support. We are planning to film more coffee brewing videos in coming weeks. So please subscribe our channel and I will see you very soon. Thank you. Bye bye.